This is one of a series of dialogues between J. Krishnamurti, David Bohm, Rupert Sheldrake, and John Hidley. The purpose of these discussions is to explore essential questions about the mind. What is psychological disorder, and what is required for fundamental psychological change? J. Krishnamurti is a religious philosopher, author, and educator who has written and given lectures on these subjects for many years. He has founded elementary and secondary schools in the United States, England, and India. David Bohm is professor of theoretical physics at Birkbeck College, London University in England. He has written numerous books concerning theoretical physics and the nature of consciousness. Professor Bohm and Mr. Krishnamurti have held previous dialogues on many subjects. Rupert Sheldrake is a biologist whose recently published book proposes that learning in some members of a species affects the species as a whole. Dr. Sheldrake is presently consulting plant physiologist to the International Crops Research Institute in Hyderabad, India. John Hidley is a psychiatrist in private practice who has been associated with the Krishnamurti School in Ojai, California for the past six years. The first three dialogues have focused on various processes of self-identification and their effects. The need for psychological security has been discussed as growing out of a basic division in which the contents of consciousness appear to be separate from consciousness itself. Today's discussion begins with the importance of attention. What is analysis? And what is observation? Good. In analysis, there is the analyzer and the analyzed. And so there is always that difference maintained. Mm -hmm. Where there is difference, there must be conflict. Division. Yeah. And that's one of the factors that, are, that really is very destructive to the whole psychological mm, freedom. This conflict, this division. Mm -hmm. And analysis <coughs> maintains this division. Whereas if one observed closely, I'm not correcting you, sir, I'm just requiring. The, the ana analyzer is the analyzed. Again, the same problem. Thought has divided the analyzer mm -hmm. and the analyzed. The analyzer is the past who has acquired a lot of knowledge, information, separated himself, and is either correcting the observed, the analyzed. Mm -hmm make him conform, or he's acting upon it. Mm -hmm. Whereas the analyzer is the analyzed. Mm -hmm. I think if that is really understood very deeply, the conflict, psychological conflict ends. Because we, in that, there is no division between the analyzer and the analyzed. There is only observation, which Dr. Bowman, we discussed at uh, considerable length some last year. So, if that is clearly understood, I'm not laying down the law, but I'm just, as I've observed, as one has observed this whole business of conflict, whether one can live the whole of one's life without conflict. That means the controller is absent, which is a very dangerous pro question. Uh -huh. I feel where there is inattention, lack of attention, is the really the whole process of conflict. Yes, I can see that if both sides saw this with the utmost clarity. Yeah, that means they are giving intelligence to the whole problem. What happens if only one party in a conflict then, sees it with the utmost what clarity? I, one gives complete attention in one's relationship between man and woman. Mm. Let's begin with that. Mm. You 
and give you complete attention. Mm. When she insults you, when she flatters you, when she bullies you, or when she attacks you, all, the, in all that is the lack of attention. If you give complete attention and the wife doesn't, mm. then what happens? That's the same problem. Mm. Either you try to explain day after day, go into it with her patiently. Mm. After all, attention implies also a great deal of care, affection, love. It's not just mental attention, mm. it's the attention with all your being. Mm. Then either she moves along with you, comes over to your side, as it were, mm. or she holds on to her separative, contradictory state. Mm. And then what happens? One is stupid, the other is intelligent. But the so there is always the battle between the stupid and the ignorant. Mm. I mean, between the ignorant, stupid and the intelligent. A thing that seems to happen in that situation is that uh, the one's intelligence makes room in which the other person who is caught in some yes. attachment may have freedom to look at it. But if, she, if the other refuses to look at it, then what's the relationship between the two people? And there is none. That's all. You see, tribalism is deadly, mm. it's destructive. You see, Basically, fundamentally, and I don't. Hmm. You have seen it probably Im immediately, hmm. and I'll take many years, made a long time to come to that. Hmm. Will you have the? I won't use the word patience. Will you have the care, affection, love, so that you? You understand my stupidity. I may rebel against you. Mm. I may divorce you. Mm. I may run away from you. But you have sown the seed somewhere in me. Mm. But that does happen, doesn't it, really, in life? Yes. You said something that interests me here. You said that if you see, you, you have seen it immediately, and the other person may take a long time to come to seeing it. Yes. And it seems like in this attention that you're talking about, perception is immediate. Of course. It, it isn't built up out of. Oh no, no. That, then it's not perception. Well, that may be part of the reason the other person is having difficulty seeing it is That's that they it. want it to be he, proved to them. You uh -huh. see, conditioning. Yeah. Is destructive. And I don't. Yes. What is our relationship between us two? It's very difficult to communicate with each other. Yeah. Verbally or with care, it's very difficult because you won't know what I'm talking no. about. No, and also I'm resisting you all the time. Uh huh. I'm defending myself. Mm -hmm. You're defending what you think you what see. What I think is right. Yeah. What I think is I've been brought up as a Hindu or a British or a German. Or a Russian, whatever it is, and I, and I see the danger of letting that go. I might lose my job. Yeah. People say I'm uh, little-minded. Mm -hmm. <laughs> People might say, but I depend on public opinion, mm -hmm. so I'm frightened to let go. Mm -hmm. So I stick to it. Mm -hmm. Then what is your relationship with me? Have you any relationship? No. No, I question whether you have no relationship. Uh -huh. I can tell you what I see. Yes, but if you have love for me, yeah. real, not just Words. attachment and mm. sex and all that business, if you really care for me, mm -hmm. you cannot lose that relationship. Mm -hmm. 
I may run away, mm -hmm. but you have the feeling of relationship. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm conveying what I'm... In other words, I don't just say, well, I see it and you don't, and if you're not going to listen, the heck with you. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. But, sir, you have established a kind of relationship, perhaps very profound, when there is love. Mm -hmm. I may reject you, but you have that responsibility of love. not only to the particular person, but to the whole of humanity. Mm -hmm. What do you say sir, about all this? Well, it's, um, <coughs> I can say a great deal more. I, I think that this care and attention are the essential points. And, uh, for example, in the question of the observer and the observed, or the uh, analyzer and the analyzed, uh, the reason why that separation occurs is because there has not been enough attention. Attention, that's what I'm right. saying. So that uh, one has to have that same attitude even in looking at one's own uh, psychological uh, problems. An attitude of care. Care and attention to uh, what's going on. You see, why that? See, one starts to analyze by habit, right? and one might condemn that. For example, that would not be the right attitude. Uh, but uh, one has to give care and attention to exactly what is happening mm -hmm. in that, just as in relationship with people. Right? And it's because that there was no attention, or ad and not, a, not the right kind of attention, that that division uh, arose in the first place mm -hmm. and was sustained, right? But it's possible to have perhaps this kind of attention towards people that we know wives, children, friends, etc. But what about people we don't know? I mean, most of us have met, never met any Russians, for example, and we feel, many of us, you know, there's this terrible fear of Russia and Russian nuclear weapons and the Russian threat and all the rest of it. And so it's very easy to think, well, we've got to have all these bombs and so on because the Russians are so terrible. And uh, we can think all these things about the Russians, we've never met them. So. How do we have attention to enemies or imagined enemies that we don't know? What is an enemy? Well, is there such thing as an enemy? Well, there are enemies in the sense that there are people who who disagree with you, who not have, only disagree. who have definite idealistic ideological differences. Well, they're usually people who are afraid of us. I mean, the Russians are afraid of us, and we're afraid of them. Um, and because they're afraid of us, they're in the position of being our enemies. Because we are still thinking in terms of tribalism. Mm. Yes, certainly. There, I suppose you and I move out of that. I'm Russian. Mm. You are English or British or um, mm. German or French. I move. I despise this sense of tribalism, mm. what's my relationship then with you? Well, we can I'm not a... Russian then. No. I'm a human being mm. with all my hu psychological problems, mm. and you are another human being with all mm. your psychological problems. Mm. You are, we are human beings, not labels. Mm. Of course, the uh, Russians may reject this, you see. That is, suppose we're in this situation. We the are Russian, in the, the, And the Russians will reject us, right? Then we have to, then, then what's the next step, right? You so see, what should they... we do? You see, I, <coughs> I represent all humanity. I am all humanity. I feel that way. Mm. To me, it's an actuality, not just <coughs> an emotional uh, explosion, an emotional romantic idea. I feel I am the rest of mankind. I am mankind. Mm. Because I suffer, I, or I enjoy, I go through all the tortures, and so do you, so do you. Mm. So uh, you are the rest of mankind. And that you have terrible responsibility for that. Mm. 
in that. Mm -hmm. So when you meet a Russian or a German or a British or Argentine, you treat them as human beings, not labels. Then does this simply mean that in this largely tribal society with governments and bombs and weapons of war, there'll just be a few individuals scattered here and there who've dissolved tribalism within yes, themselves? Yes, if, if a hundred of us mm. all over the world mm. really non-tribalistic attitude towards life, mm. we would be like acting mm. like a I don't know, like a light in the midst of darkness. Mm. Mm. But we don't. We, this just becomes an idealistic, romantic idea, and you drop it, because each pursues his own way. <laughs> yes. So I think we ought to differentiate between attention and concentration. Mm. Concentration is focusing your energy on a certain point. Mm -hmm. mm. Certain. And attention, there is no focusing on a certain point. It's attention. Mm -hmm. mm. Concentration seems to have a goal in mind. A goal, motive. Mm -hmm. It's a restrictive process. Mm -hmm. You have to. I concentrate on a page, but my thought. I'm looking out of the window, and I have to mm. pull it back and keep on this business. Mm -hmm. Whereas, if I gave complete attention to what I'm looking out of the window, mm -hmm. that laser which is going along the wall, and with that same attention, I can give look at my book. Look what I'm doing. Concentration presupposes that there's a controller in there pulling it back. That just did. Uh -huh. mm. But then, if there's no controller of the attention, the attention is simply a, a response to whatever the present circumstances yeah. are. You insult me. Mm. I'm attentive. Mm. There, there's no. Mm, Recording that insult. Hmm. Mm -hmm. huh? Yes, I said. <coughs> you flatter me. What oh, a marvelous talk you gave the other day. I've had this so often repeated, mm. and I bored with it. So, and not only bored. I see the, what. So the, you follow. Sir? There is. Is it possible, really? That's a much more difficult question. Is it possible not to record except where it is necessary? It's necessary to record when you are driving, to learn mm -hmm. how to drive, record when you do your business and all the rest of it. Mm. But psychologically, what's the need to record? Isn't it inevitable? Doesn't our memory work automatically? Memory is rather selective. You seem to remember things that are important to us. Yes. Have some okay. connect in with who we think we are and what our goals are. But it, it seems to me that uh, uh, when there's paying attention, then in general, uh, attention determines what is to be recorded and what is not. That yes, is, it's not yes. automatic anymore. It's not automatic anymore. But if it comes from the past, from uh, from the concentration or from uh, the analysis, then it will be automatic. Another problem which you ought to discuss, we said yesterday we would religion, mm -hmm. meditation, mm -hmm. and if there is something sacred. We said mm -hmm. we just yes. talked mm -hmm. about that. Is there anything sacred in life? Not thought creating something sacred mm -hmm. and then worshipping that sacred, mm -hmm. which is absurd. Mm -hmm. the, say, for instance, all the Indian, in all the Indian temples there are, there are images, like in the Christian church. 
or the Muslim in the mosque, there is this marvelous writing. It's the same. And we worship that. That's idolatry. No. Thought has created this. Yeah. The thought has created the image. Yeah. And then it worships it. I don't know if you see the absurdity of yeah. that. Well, that's manifestly absurd. But the more sophisticated members of different religions would say that it's not the thought, the image that created by thought that's being worshipped, but the image points to something beyond thought which, which is, is being worshipped. Which is, wait a minute, let's look at it. Mm. That is the symbol. Mm. We know symbol is not the real, but why do we create the symbol? Please answer. If there well, is something beyond, why do we create the the intermediary. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that there's in, this is a question which in certain religions has been central to them, the Jews, who were against all idolatry, for exactly this reason, and the Muslims, who don't have images in the mosques. No, but they have these. They have script. writing. <laughs> of course. Well, they think writing is what tells them uh, about the, what lies beyond all symbols, you see. Yes. Now, you can say the writing simply becomes a symbol, but I mean, these are words, and words can help us. Yeah. We're having a discussion, and these words that we're having, your words may help me, for example. Yes. If they're written down, then they're written words like so, Muslim words. Why do I have to have an intermediary at all? Because I think I'm here, and it's over there, and I don't have it. I need some way to get there. No. No, no, you're not answering my question. Is it that you, the intermediary, understand or realized or found truth or whatever it is, and therefore you're telling me about it? Well, maybe I've seen something and I want to tell you about it. Yes, tell me about it. But why do you make yourself interpreter? Or do you become the intermediary between that, I don't know what that is, mm -hmm. and me, who is ignorant, who is suffering? Why don't you deal with my suffering rather than with that? Mm -hmm. I think that that will deal with your suffering, if I can get you to... That has been, sir, that has been the old trick of all the priests in the world. We have had priests from time immemorial, right? Yeah. But I haven't released my freedom, my sorrow. I'm still suffering after a million years. Yeah. What for? Help me to get rid of that. Help me to be free without fear, then I'll find out. Is it that you want position, power, status, like, like the rest of the world? Yeah. Now this is, this is really quite serious. Uh, yeah. I think, you know, if we try to give the, the priests the most favorable interpretation, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that they may have considered, and at least the, most, uh, the best among them, that, uh, that uh, there's a kind of poetic imagery that people may use to point to something beyond that right, in a communication. And they're trying to point to this uh, sacred, which uh, we were talking about. That's perhaps the way they would look at it. Now, would you say that that would make no sense, you know, to have a poetic image to point to the sacred? But, sir, why don't you help me to see what is happening to me? Yes, I, that, that's your point. Don't point to the sacred right away, but uh, look at this help first. Help me to be free of it, then I walk. Yes, I understand that. Yeah. We have never talked. Nobody has gone into this like that. Mm -hmm. We've always got some saviour, some brahmana, and so on, and so on. Mm -hmm. And this is what we call religion. Mm -hmm. All the rituals are invented by thought. Mm -hmm. 
marvelous architecture by thought. All the things inside the churches, temples, mosques are created by thought. And having thought created, then thought worships it. But thought is not sacred. Yeah, I see that. So you're saying, is it possible to put a stop to thought? Thought. Is it possible? And thought is the thing that gets in the way by creating the images which we take for something really valuable. I start out looking for something sacred. Yeah. You come along and say, I'll tell you all about it. Mm -hmm. Then you begin to organize it. Mm -hmm. And it's all gone by then, it's finished. Mm -hmm. Then I just stay within thought. That's all I have. So, if we reject or understand that thought is not sacred. There is nothing holy about thought. Mm -hmm. But thought thinks that what it has created is holy. Mm -hmm. Right, sir? Yeah. Would you also add that, uh, just for the sake of, that time is not sacred? I mean, not time that, nothing is not in time, but people Tomorrow would say that. Not right? sacred. No, they always say only the eternal is sacred, right? <laughs> But to find out <laughs> what is eternity, that's mm -hmm. what time must stop. Mm. But we get into a real subtle place here because you have said things like absolute attention yes. dissolves the self. Then absolute attention it's can become a thought. Idea th of it, yes. Yeah, the idea of it. So we may go the route of creating the idea. That seems so to always be the danger. You make a statement. Yeah. <coughs> absolute attention. I don't capture the depth of your meaning, mm -hmm. what is implied. What you have gone into it, and you can say that, mm -hmm. absolute attention. <coughs> I hear it, and make it into an idea, mm -hmm. and then I pursue the idea. Mm -hmm. That seems to be the mm. process. That's what we do all the time. <coughs> yes. So, it's gone. Mm -hmm. Idea is not what you said. Mm -hmm. What but you said had depth in it. But we don't know that we're pursuing an idea. We what? think that we don't under realize at the time that we're pursuing an idea. Of course not. Because I'm used to this <coughs> reducing everything into abstract ideas. Mm -hmm. So could we try to find out or realize that anything thought does is not sacred. Mm -hmm. That seems self-evident to me. Eh? All right. Mm. If that's self-evident. All the religions as they are now, there is nothing sacred. Right? No, there's nothing sacred in, in itself in the words or the buildings or the so on. But uh, in a sense, all these religions are supposed to point beyond themselves. Yes. Why? And to help me mm. to go beyond all this, mm. I must start with my being free from my agony, my understand my relationship with, my, with people. Mm. If there is confusion here, mm. in my heart and my mind, What's the good of the other? I'm not materialistic. Mm. I'm not anti the other. But I say, look, I must start where I am. Mm. To go very far, mm. I must start very near. Mm -hmm. I am very near. Mm. So I'm, I must understand myself. I'm the rest of humanity. I am not an individual. I know. So there is the book of humanity in me. I am the, that book. If I know how to read it from the beginning to the end, then I can go. Then I can find if there is a possibility. If there is real something that is immense, mm -hmm. sacred. But if you are all the time saying, look, there is that, mm -hmm. 
that will help you. I say, it hasn't helped me. We have had these religions for millions of years. Mm -hmm. It hasn't. On the contrary, you have distracted from what is. Mm -hmm. So, if I want to find out if there is anything sacred, I must start very near. The very near is me. And can I free myself from fear, agony, sorrow, despair, all that? When, when there is freedom, I can move, mm -hmm. I can climb mountains. Mm -hmm. So, are you saying that the sacred would become apparent if we dissolve fear? And all these other things. Oh, obviously, that sir. That's real meditation, you see. Through attention to what is really happening, happening in us. Yeah, that's it. And just what is really happening between us and other people and all the rest of it. Between our relationship. Yes. Through attention to this. This attention and <coughs> we've discussed too with Dr. Bohm the uh, some time ago, <coughs> having an insight into the whole movement of the Self, mm. which is not <coughs> a remembrance. Mm. Insight is total perception of what you are, mm. without analysis, mm. without investigation, all that, total immediate perception of the whole content of your consciousness. Not take bit by bit by bit. That's mm -hmm. endless. Oh, we're broken up, so we look at each little piece. Yeah. And because we are broken up, we can never see the whole. Obviously, that seems so logical. OK. So, is it possible not to be broken up. Why? What is to be broken up? This, this confusion, this mess in consciousness, mm -hmm. which we talked about yesterday. Mm -hmm. You see, nobody wants to go so deeply into all this, mm -hmm. right, sir? First of all, one hasn't the time. One is committed to one's job, to one's profession, to one's science to us, whatever one is doing. Mm -hmm. And you say, please, this is too difficult or too abstract, not practical. That's the word they all use. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As though all this, what you are doing all is terribly practical. Our, yeah. mm -hmm. Armaments, is it practical? Mm -hmm. Tribalism is Oh, well, you know all about it. Mm. So, sir, let's move from there. Is silence of the mind a state of attention? Or is it beyond attention? I don't know if I. What would you mean by beyond attention? Let's try to get into that. Is it inattention is there? Is attention an act of will? I will attain. Hmm. No, we've said that's concentration. Yes. So I'm asking you, is there in a where there is attention, is there any kind of effort? Struggle? I must attain. No. What is attention? Let's yeah. go into it a little bit. What is attention? In which is a 
the word diligent is implied in attention, to be diligent, not negligent. What does diligent mean? Careful. Yeah. You to, mean careful? To yeah, care. Mm. To be very precise. Mm. Mm. Diligent. What? The literal meaning is taking pains. Pain. That's right. Taking pain, mm. which is to to care, to have affection, to do everything correctly, mm. orderly, not repetitive. Is attention demand the action of thought? Well, it doesn't demand the action of analysis in the no. way you've explained it. Certainly. And insofar as thought is analytical, it doesn't demand that. And it doesn't demand the action of will, insofar as will involves <coughs> a separation, an attempt to, by one part of the mind, to force another part to do something else. And it doesn't Im imply any sense of um, going anywhere or becoming anything, that's because that becoming, is something that yeah. leads you one out of the present. That's right. You can't become attentive. Mm. But in the act of but attention... Right. Just see what, what is implied in it. You can't become attentive. That means in attention there is no time. Becoming implies time. Yes. In attention, there is no time. Mm -hmm. Therefore, there is, is not the result of thought. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, is that attention silence of the mind, which is a healthy, sane mind? Uncluttered, unattached, unanchored, free mind, mm -hmm. which is the healthiest mind. Mm -hmm. Is therefore I'm asking, out of that, in that attention, is the mind silent? There is no movement of thought. Well, it sounds like it, yes. Huh? Mm. It sounds like a state of being rather than a state of becoming, because it's not going anywhere Again, or coming from be, anywhere. Let's, when you say being, what does that mean? Being what? Well, being what it is. It's not being something else. No. What does that mean, being? Are you putting being as an opposite of becoming? Yes. And then the opposite has its own opposite. Well, by being, I simply mean a state which is not in, in, in a process of going somewhere else in time. Which means non-movement. I suppose so. Well, you could say that, yes. Huh? Hmm. Non movement. If you, if you say what you mean by movement, that it doesn't mean it's static to say it's no, non movement. It's dynamic. Of course, dynamic, of course. but you say it's a little difficult. There is no moving from here to there. Hmm. But there is uh, another kind of movement, perhaps. Yeah, that's, what, that's what I want to go into. If you use the word being without movement, it is without thought, mm. without time, mm. which is the movement which we know, but the other is, has its own dy dynamism, its own movement, but not this movement, mm. the time movement, thought movement. Is that what you call B? I suppose it is. Well, 
is that being silent for us we have various forms of silence mm. right yes I mean, it may not be silent in the sense of soundless. I'm using the word silence in the sense without a single movement of thought. Oh, well, in that sense, it must be silent, almost by definition. Yes. Mm. So, uh, has my mind, the mind, mm. has it stopped thinking? Has it not stopped thinking? Has, the, has thought found its own place and therefore it's no longer moving, chattering, pushing around. Because there is no controller. Mm. You follow? Mm. Because when they did that Great silence, then that which is eternal is. I don't have to inquire about it. It's not a process. It isn't something you achieve, my God. Mm. Mm. By fasting, by rituals, by uh, all the absurdities. You hear that? Yes. You hear X saying that. What value has it? Value in the sense, what do you do with it? What is, what is, has it any importance or none at all? Because you are going your way. Mm-hmm. You are a psychologist. You go your way. I'll go my way, because I've said what I have to say, and it ends. Mm-hmm. Then what? Somebody comes along and says, I'll tell you what he means by this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. You haven't <coughs> time. He has little time. He says, I'll tell you all about it. Mm-hmm. And you're caught. Mm-hmm. This is what is happening. From the ancient of times, the Sumerians, the Egyptians, the Babylonians, they have played this. And we are doing still the same kind of nonsense. Mm-hmm. And I said, what, what has religion done to man? It hasn't helped him. It has given him romantic, illusory comfort. Actually, look what we're killing each other. Don't go to it. So, sir, let's begin. What is a healthy mind? <laughs> It's a mind that's not caught so in this... A mind that's whole, healthy, sane, holy, H-O-L-Y, holy, that more, all that means a healthy mind. Mm-hmm. That's what we started discussing. Yeah. What is a healthy mind? The world is so neurotic, How are we going to tell you as an analyst, as a psychologist, how are we going to tell people what's a healthy mind? Nobody's going to pay attention. Mm -hmm. They'll listen to the tape, to television, say what they say, they'll agree, Mm -hmm. but they'll go on their own way. Mm -hmm. So what do we do? How do we, first of all, do do I I, I have a healthy mind? Or oh, it's just a lot of pictures, words, images, and uh, mm-hmm. a 
mind that is totally unattached to my country, to my ideas, all totally dispassionately unattached. Mm-hmm. Are you suggesting that only then am I in a position Obviously. to talk to anybody? <laughs> Obviously. Uh-huh. <clears throat> I just I may be married. I may but I why should I be attached to my wife? Mm-hmm. Then it's an idea of marriage, it's yeah. not a marriage. But love is not attachment. So have I realized that my life, a healthy mind that says, I love, therefore there is no attachment. Mm -hmm. Is that possible? It's a... So you may... it sounds so easy and so difficult at the same time. I don't see why it's difficult. Because, you see, I hear what you say. I think this is absolutely wonderful stuff. I want to have a healthy mind. I want to be in a state of being. And then, you see, I realise that I'm... it's back into this... Time. I can't become in a state of having a healthy mind. And I can't move by an act of will or desire into this state. It has to happen. And it can't happen through any act of my will. No. So... So I have to let it happen in some no. sense. This will begin to inquire. You begin to say, now, why? Why am I not healthy? Am I attached to my house? I need a house. Why should mm. I be attached to it? Mm. Um, wife, it's a relationship. We, I can't exist without relationship. Mm-hmm. Life is relationship. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But why should I be attached to a, a person? Mm-hmm. Or to an idea, to a faith, to a symbol? You follow the whole yeah. cycle of it. Mm. To my nation, to my guru, to my god, to follow mm-hmm. attachments atta- right through. Can a mind can be free of all that? Of course it can. But not just by wanting to be free no, of it. No, but seeing the consequences of it, seeing the mm. what is in what is involved in it, mm. the pain, the pleasure, the agony, the fear. You follow the all, mm. all of that's involved. Such a mind is an unhealthy mind. Yes, but one can even agree with that. One can even see it. One can even see the movements of one's attachments. One can even see the destructive consequences of all this. But that doesn't in itself seem automatically to dissolve no, of course it. Not. So it r- brings into a quite a different question. Oh, geez. So, do you hear it, or merely with your sensory ears, or do you really hear it? You understand my question? Yes. Is it just casual, verbal, sensory hearing, or hearing at depth? If you hear it at at the greatest depth, then it's part of you. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, well, I think uh, generally one doesn't hear it at the greatest depth, and uh, uh, something is stopping it. You see that yeah. all the conditioning. All our con- and also probably we don't want to hear it. Well, that but the conditioning makes us not want of to course, hear it. Of course, that uh, we're unwilling to do so. How can I say to my wife, "I love you, but I'm not attached"? She'll say, "What the?" What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> but if I, if one sees the absolute necessity, necessary, necessity to have a healthy mind. And the demand for it, not only in myself, but in my children, my my society. But you don't mean by that going around demanding of myself no, and no, other no. people that they be I healthy. I demand in myself. Mm-hmm. I dem- I ask why is not my mind healthy? Mm-hmm. Why is it neurotic? Mm-hmm. 
Then I begin to inquire. I watch, I attend, I pay. Mm. I'm diligent in what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it seems to me that you, you said we must have to see the absolute necessity of a healthy yes, mind, but I think we've been conditioned to the absolute necessity of maintaining attachment. Right? <laughs> uh, no, that's what we feel, right? <laughs> Well, we haven't necessarily. You see, th- th- there are many people who've seen that there's all these problems, there's uh-huh. something wrong with the mind, they feel that something to be done about it and all that, and then take up some kind of spiritual practice, meditation oh. or whatnot. Uh-huh. Now, you're saying that all these kinds of meditation, concentrating on chakras and whatnot, are all just the same kind of thing. We have played, I played that trick from long ago. Yes. And I see the absurdity of all that. That's not, that's not going to stop thought. Well, some of these methods are supposed to. But <laughs> I don't know if they do or not, you see. Yeah. They've never done it for me. Or, or, so, so, but I don't know if that's because I haven't done them enough. <laughs> Instead of going through all that business, why don't you find out, let's find out what is thought, whether it can end, what is implied. You follow? Mm. Dig. So at the end of these four discussions, Mm -hmm. have we got healthy minds? Have we got mind that's not confused? Groping, floundering, demanding, asking, invest. Oh, you follow, sir? Mm-hmm. <laughs> God, what a business to mm-hmm. It's like seeing a rattler and say, yes, it's a rattler, I won't go near it. Mm-hmm. Finished. Mm-hmm. It looks from the inside like this is a tremendous deep problem that's very difficult to solve. And you're saying from the outside that it's just like seeing a rattler and you don't go near it, there's nothing to it. Gee, that I'm, it is like that with me. Yeah. Because I don't want to achieve nirvana or mm-hmm. heaven or anything. I say, look, let me, you follow? Mm-hmm. Well, it, I think it's interesting why it looks so deep when in fact it isn't. No, sir, we're all so very superficial. Uh-huh. Right? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And that seems to satisfy us. That's our good house, good wife, good job, good uh, relationship. Don't disturb anything. Mm-hmm. I go to church, you go to the mosque, I go to the temple. Mm-hmm. Keep things as they are. Well, then you're saying we don't even want to look at it. No, of course not. But say we come with Should a problem. Say if Mr. Thatcher and the gentleman in Argentina looked at it, they would tribally stick there, yeah. they would stop it. Yeah. But they don't, because the public doesn't want it. Mm-hmm. British are different. Yeah. We are educated to be cruel to each other. Mm-hmm. I don't go to. <laughs> mm. So, a healthy mind is that, sir. Mm-hmm. A healthy mind is without any conflict. And that's why then it is a holistic mind. And then it, there's a possibility <coughs> of that which is sacred to me. Otherwise, all of this is so childish.